Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at forces, acceleration, and then doing some work on rearranging equations. So let's start off with forces. Draw the four forces acting on an aeroplane while it's flying at constant speed. So for me, this is the key to this question, the fact it's at constant speed, because that tells you some key things. Uh, so first of all, with a force diagram, one thing we're looking for is all forces should come from the center, of, or in this case of the airplane. And because it's at constant speed, we should have the lift force equaling a weight force, like you can see here. So you can see the arrows are the same length. And we should have a, the forward thrust force should be equal to the backwards drag force. And if we have that, that will mean it goes at constant speed. Okay, so the plane has a mass of 20 tons. Calculate its mass in kilograms. So you might know this, or you, this might be something you needed to look up when you were doing this, but essentially one ton is 1,000 kilograms, so 20 tons is gonna be 20,000 kilograms. So calculate the resultant force required to give it an acceleration of 2.5 meters per second squared. Uh, so this, these are the stages we use for you know, using equations. So the equation that we need is this one, resultant force equals mass times acceleration. This time we actually don't need to rearrange it because resultant force is already the subject. We substitute in the numbers that we've got. Uh, mass would need to be in kilograms. And then we give our answer to an appropriate number of significant figures and with a unit. And in this case, two significant figures would be appropriate because acceleration and mass are to two significant figures. Okay, so if the plane was flying in the atmosphere on Mars, how would the resultant force required to give it an acceleration of 2.5 meters per second have to change? Would it increase, decrease, or stay the same? And we're gonna look for an explain and uh, the answer. So the correct answer here is it would stay exactly the same. And the key to this is that mass is the same everywhere. So it doesn't matter if we're on the moon, Mars, in outer space, wherever you are, mass is the same. And mass tells you the, an object's resistance to motion, or is it, it's a contributor to the resistance to changes in the motion, which we sometimes call inertia. So the bigger a mass something has, the more inertia it has, the harder it is to change its motion. But the key is on Earth, on the moon, on Mars, wherever you are, the mass is the same, so inertia is the same. And what that means is it's going to take the same resultant force to give the same acceleration, if mass is the same. If instead the resultant force is 35 kilonewtons, determine its new acceleration. So that when you see a K next to the unit, that means killer, that means 1,000. So 35 kilonewtons is just 35,000 newtons. So again, we're gonna be using the same uh, stages in our working. So this is the equation that we use. This time we want to calculate acceleration. So what I've done is I divided both sides by mass. Then I've substituted in the numbers. Then I'm gonna give the answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, two, and with a unit, meters per second squared. That's the unit of acceleration. If one of the engines breaks, explain what will happen to the plane. So, the thrust force will decrease. So, you know, if one of your engines is broken, the forward thrust force is gonna be smaller. And that's gonna mean that the resultant force is now backwards, because drag at that point would be now greater than the thrust force, because one of your engines is broken. And if that's true, it's going to slow down. If the, or the resultant force is in the opposite direction to your motion, you are gonna slow down or decelerate if you like. So as the plane slows down, lift force decreases. So the resultant force is also now downward. So it's gonna accelerate downwards. So it's gonna slow down and it's gonna accelerate downwards. So it's gonna go into a kind of dive if you like. So uh, moving on to some, some more challenging questions, incorporating some of the other equations that we've come across so far. So again, you're gonna say we use the same five stages. So we've got an equation for density and we've got an equation to calculate weight force now as well. 
So modeling an airplane as a cylinder with radius of five and length 30 determine its volume. So a cylinder looks like this and we calculate the volume of a cylinder by finding the area of the cross section using pi r squared and times it by the height or the length, whatever you want to call it. So we can plug our numbers in and we can get ourselves a volume to two sniffing it figures. And our, we've got our volume would be measured in meters cubes because our radius and our length were in meters. Determine its mass if its density is 10,000. So this is our density equation. We want to get mass, so we multiply both sides by volume. Then we plug our numbers in. We've got our density, we've got our volume because we just calculated it, and that gives us our mass. So you can see our plane mass is very, very big. Um, possibly bigger than a real plane would be by quite a long way, but I think we've overestimated our density and our volume just a little bit, but let, let's ignore that for now. Determine its weight force. So weight force, we need the mass and the gravitational field strength. So the mass we already calculated. Gravitational field strength on Earth is 10. So that gives us our value of weight force. And you'll notice what I'm starting to introduce with the answers is actually writing it what we call standard form, which makes it much easier to write and deal with rather than writing out hundreds of zeros. So determine the lift force acting on it if it's accelerating downwards at 1.5 meters per second squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what the resultant force would be that causes that acceleration. So we can plug our values in and we can see we need a resultant force 3.5 times 10 to the 7 newtons. So the resultant force is going to be equal to the weight force minus the lift force. Because the weight force acts downwards, lift force acts upwards, and the difference between them would be the resultant force. So we can rearrange that. We want to calculate what the lift force is. So if we add the lift force to both sides and then subtract the resultant force, we end up with this expression here, which we can then do the subtraction and you end up with the lift force of 2 times 10 to the 8 newtons uh, there. And that completes this set of questions looking at forces, acceleration and then some additional equations.